everyone, and welcome to Creme 2 News at Noon. It is good to see you. I'm Laura Papetti. Happy Monday. So let's take a live look outside, begin the show with a little bit of gray out there, as you can see over overlooking the lake. It's um, it's just a little bit dreary, is what we'll call it. Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu is standing by in the Creme 2 Weather Center. And Jeremy, uh, it's just kind of blah. Yeah, it's one of those days where you just kind of want something to happen. Laura, I got a pro tip though. If you have time this afternoon, yes. you really don't have to head that far to our west or our south here in Spokane to find a little bit of sunshine, but we're right on the edge of it. And over in Coeur d'Alene, it's just gloomy. And it's just that kind of day. We've got clouds kind of taking over sun, trying to peek through in both spots. Temperatures just slightly above freezing. We've already hit 35 here in Spokane, 32 there in Sandpoint and 40 in Moses Lake. It's trying to warm up and the wind's doing a decent job. We've got some gusts staying strong this afternoon, but basically we've been through the worst of it. That's how I would look at this. And as we move through the rest of the day, it's really just kind of the lingering bits of our passing front. So up in the higher elevations. This lasts until 4 p.m. Basically 4th of July pass, lookout pass. You're looking at about two to seven inches total. I think if you're in the Silver Valley, Wallace Kellogg, you're gonna be around that two inch mark up on the passes, much closer to that seven inch mark. And yes, we did see that initial push of moisture this morning. Things tapered off and now we're looking at the start of something. Notice how clouds kind of build in in those past few radar scans. That's a sign that we are going to see a little more moisture. We're gonna try to squeeze some out here in eastern Washington, but it just looks like things have dried out drastically as we get into the afternoon. So be ready for it on the top of the mountain passes later today. But other than that, I do think we dry out quite nicely later on this afternoon, and I think this is a little overzealous for tomorrow morning, but wouldn't be shocked if we saw a couple of flurries. All in all, not that bad. It looks like we climb into the mid to upper 30s later on this afternoon. We'll do a little bit of snow melting and then it's back to our freezing cycle as temperatures take a dive in the days to come. Jeremy, thank you. Today is the fourth day of Freeman victim impact statements prior to Caleb Sharp's sentencing. Now, the shooter has already pled guilty to first degree murder charges more than four years after killing a student and injuring three others. For the past week, members of the Freeman High School community have been sharing their thoughts and their struggles in the years following that day. That image is one I still suffer from extreme nightmares to this day. Caleb turned towards the three of us with the gun still in his hand and pointed it at us, but continued to turn without firing. That student told the judge she will carry the images, the smells and the noises of that day with her for the rest of her life. Many of the people who have shared their statements over the previous few days have asked the judge to give the shooter the maximum sentence. Many of them also ending the phrase Freeman Strong. Be sure to stay to Creme 2 News first at four for the very latest again on the latest uh, continuation of the victim impact statements from Freeman. Washington state lawmakers are considering a bill that would create a registry of domestic violence offenders. It is named after Tina Stewart, a Spokane woman who was killed by her boyfriend back in 2017. A judge sentenced her boyfriend to 16 years for second degree murder. I have a list, 10 states, including Washington state animal abuse registries. And we're not thinking about perpetrators of domestic violence that are murdering our loved ones. In 2019, two proposed bills failed in the legislature, citing privacy problems. And the president of the University of Idaho is rejecting claims that students were being indoctrinated, which he says led to a major cut in the school's budget. University President Scott Green says an independent study by a law firm was unable to substantiate those allegations. Last year, lawmakers cut $2.5 million from Idaho higher education budgets because of indoctrination claims. Coming in new at noon, Governor Brad Little is activating the Idaho National Guard again to help with the impacts of COVID-19 throughout, throughout Idaho. Rather, This is the fourth time the Guard has been activated since the beginning of the pandemic. 75 Guardmen will be helping the Idaho Department of Correction. Also, Little says 503 additional personnel have been hired to help Idaho hospitals that are being overwhelmed by COVID-19. All right, here in Washington state, free N95 masks from the federal government have arrived in the state and they will be making their way here to Spokane as well. Nicole Hernandez explaining how you can get your hands on a mask. 
So these masks here are the ones that you typically see, the ones people can get their hands on pretty easily. These are KN95 masks, but the masks that you're going to be able to get from your local Walgreens, like the one right here behind me, or Rite Aid, are N95 masks. Now, they're both pretty similar. They have typically the same standards, uh, and the CDC says if you have either, it will help prevent COVID-19. The Washington State Department of Health says the N95 masks will be available at any stores that give out COVID vaccines. Now, we don't know exactly when pharmacies will be stocked up here in Spokane, can, but the Department of Health says we should see them, quote, in the coming days. Pharmacies over on the west side are already getting stocked. One customer said getting their N95 was super simple. I just asked at the register about N95 masks and they um, gave them to me. <laughs> super easy. Not uncommon to know people that are getting sick, so it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable to have a higher quality mask. Now, these masks are arriving after the Biden administration announced they are shipping 400 million free masks across the country. The masks are coming from the government's strategic national stockpile, which has 750 million masks. Uh, the CDC says N95 masks and KN95 masks, like the one I have here, are better at stopping the spread of COVID-19. They suggest wearing one of these or that N95 mask instead of the surgical and cloth masks. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crumb 2 News. Nicole, we'll appreciate the update. American pharmaceutical and biotech company Moderna announced this morning that the FDA has granted full approval for its COVID-19 vaccine. The action by the FDA means the agency has completed the same rigorous time-consuming review of Moderna's shot as dozens of other long-established vaccines. The decision was bolstered by real-world evidence from more than 200 million doses administered in the U.S. since the FDA cleared the shot in December of 2020. The FDA granted approval of Pfizer's vaccine just last August. And one poll as of last year run by a couple of healthcare worker unions in the state found that 84% of healthcare workers say they feel burnt out. 49% of workers say they're likely to leave the profession now in the next few years. The Washington State Nurses Associations and healthcare unions say healthcare workers have been leaving the industry since before the pandemic and that COVID-19 has really only made the problem worse. The two proposed bills in the House and Senate would aim to limit the number of patients that nurses are assigned and ban mandatory overtime. The Washington State Hospitals Association continues to review the bills, but says there are immediate concerns over patient care, especially in regards to COVID-19. This bill at, would be imposing more limits and constraints on our ability to stretch staff um, uh, so that they can serve patients um, in these really challenging circumstances instead of providing more flexibility. The public hearing in the Senate Committee on Labor, Commerce and Tribal Affairs was set for 9.30 this morning. And Canada's Prime Minister has tested positive for COVID-19. Justin Trudeau tweeted that he is fully vaccinated and feeling fine and is working remotely this week following public health guidelines. He has also encouraged everyone to get vaccinated and boosted. At least one of Trudeau's children has also tested positive. The family is isolating in an undisclosed location because people opposing health restrictions are protesting in the capital. All right, 1209 right now. Spotify is making some changes to its platform podcast discussing COVID-19. What podcast host Joe Rogan and other artists are saying about those changes coming up next. <laughs> 